There is nothing more satisfying in Tarkov than a perfectly placed snipe. Because behind every pull of the trigger, the universe has to align. From unexpected encounters to split-second decisions. We'll let him walk by. One wrong step. Oh, what the hell? And it's over. Oh! So in today's video, I challenged myself to complete 35 kills in total in 70 hours as a sniper in Tarkov's most brutal urban environments. Later in the video, you're not going to want to miss how lucky I got in this moment right here. Our adventure begins in Street to Tarkov, where I'm tasked to get 30 kills in this map while wearing this specific beanie and sunglasses for a quest called Dandies. And of course, I decided to do this with a sniper loadout. My plan for each raid is simple. I'm going to approach the nearest gunshots I hear and figure out how to snipe it. I'm hovering here next to Pinewood Hotel where I heard a lot of shots going down. And as I investigate the area, I hear someone walking next to me. Someone's in the windows. Someone else just dropped them from the hotel windows. So I shift my attention to the left and immediately see my suspect. I see his barrel. He's gotta poke his head out of it. Come on, pick your head out. His barrel is this. There. Come on. Got him. First kill. I then decided to cross the street because I heard faint footsteps in the building next to me, hoping for another target. But then while setting up for an angle, No, GG. In hindsight, I should have swapped my pistol, but that is kill one of 30. With still a ton of targets to drop, it was in our next raid that would begin our snowball. Because about a minute of spawning into the map, this happens. Well, that's kill two of 30, I guess. After looting him clean, I hear non-stop gunshots nearby. It went on for a while, which gave me time to figure out where it was coming from exactly. So I perched upon this apartment building and found them. Oh. I see a couple. Two guys. Oof. Oh, I whiffed. Oh, they have no clue where I am. Dropped one. There's another one right there. I'm going to get my arms down in the back. So up. there's a better angle up here. I see him looting his friend behind the metal sheet. I'm gonna go mag dump this M4 on him. Where is he? Oh, there he is. I can see him. I can see him prone. Oh, there's another one. Drop another one. There's a lot in the ballerina. What the hell? He's definitely going to come down. There's no way he's... How many are they in there? Oh, I need stamina. Oh, the wrong timing. Oh, I whiffed. Oh, I dropped him again. Well, what the hell are they doing? How many did I drop in there? He's shooting someone else too, so they think the shots are coming from below. But I don't think that's... Is that the only one? It might be the only one. I don't know. But I dropped... Uh, I think I dropped three players. Oh, there's another one right there. What the hell? Oh, I'm out of ammo. One in the chamber. One bullet. Come on. One bullet. Drop them. Dude. What the hell is going on? I dropped four guys just now. 
And that's 5 PMC kills already in this raid alone. I waited for about a minute and saw no one else, so I prepared to cross and loot my winnings. On the way there, I cleared my way through a handful of scavs, which also counts as the 30 kills by the way, and safely got up to their little base of operations. So that's the first guy I killed. Oh my god, there's so many dead bodies. There was way too much loot for one man to carry, so I only took what I could. Also worth mentioning, I set myself a rule where I'm not allowed to drop my sniper rifle for anything else throughout these three days. So I'll have a bolty with me through every step of the way. So as you watch me loot, I'm keeping it on myself and only taking attachments from other guns to make some profit. Alright, I'm done. Let's get out of here. Extracted safely and counted the day to end on an extremely high note, finishing day one with 13 of 30 kills. The goal for day two is to finish the remaining 17 kills before the day ends. That's non-negotiable. That way, I can focus on getting my last task done, which is five sniper headshots in Ground Zero, Tarkov's newest urban map, to wrap up our 70 hours of sniping. So to begin our second day, I went straight for a sniper angle on the car dealership, which is an extreme hot spot because one of the map's scav bosses spawns there. I cleared my way of scavs to safely get to my position, again, adding to our kill count, to finally set myself up for an angle. And immediately, I see someone. Oh, there he is. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the headshot and I never saw him again. I took the L, disengaged, and extracted to reset for another one. This time though, with better luck. Because straight from spawning in, I made it into a nearby apartment building that overlooked high foot traffic areas on both sides of the building. Coincidentally, there's a scav that just took a shot at me on this side of the building, which gave me a light bulb moment. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that scav alone and just favor this side until that scab gets aggroed. So now we have a telltale sign if someone's on that side of the building. So I can focus on this side while my now teammate, squad mate scab tells me if someone's nearby. Oh, right there. Got him. Second shot hit. Question is, what does he have? Looks juicy. I jumped out the window, looted up, and decided to go for a quick extract to take home my profit. But unfortunately... Oh! I was not ready for that recoil. <laughs> Although I got clapped, I'm still happy we got a sniper kill. Putting us at 17 of 30 kills coming into this next one, where we make up for the last couple of blunders. Some minutes after spawning in, I hear a lot of activity inside one of Streets of Tarkov's most contested buildings, Check 15. So I set myself up in the same sniper angle as I did in the first day where I dropped the foreman, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right on cue, I see someone come out from behind of Check 15. Lost them. There we go. I think that's number 17 or 18, but GG. Then shortly after, another one comes running into the scene of the crime. He's, you know, he wants that body. He wants it. He's clearing, he's clearing. I think I just stay patient. Yep, he's going for it. He's 100% going for that loot. Two guys, cover me while I loot. I'll do the looting. Dead. As the second guy tucks away into this building, I don't see him for about a full minute until I hear this. He's still there? He's still in the area. He's just, it sounds like he's just on the other side of the building. And as I take a quick snack break, I see a scav head into the building. Oh, there's a scav. Let's see. Yep, he's still definitely in there. So I waited patiently, but then saw something else. Wait a minute. Another juicer dead. 
three down, 21 targets down, nine to go. And when I thought three snipes from this window was enough, a couple minutes later, I just kill another player. What is going on? This window is OP. I still wasn't sure if our original target was still around, but then scabs started flooding into the area and none of them were being shot by anyone else. So I took this as a sign that our original suspect must have left the area. So I cleared the scabs myself, then decided it was time to loot my winnings. Actually insane how many PMCs there were out here. Again, my only rule, can't drop my sniper. Oh, there it is. The good news, we're not 25 of 30 kills. Five to go before I can wrap up day number two. In this next one, I find myself at the windows of Pinewood Hotel, looking over this little archway where I hear gunshots behind. Then this scab walks in, and a few seconds later, gets blasted. So he's gonna walk in. Let's see where he goes, left or right. He's going left. We should hear gunshots in a few. I think I go. So I carefully make my way in and figure out what's going on. The problem, this compound is a recent addition to the map, and it's my first time here, so I have no clue what the layout of this place is like. I've never been here before, so I have no clue where to look. That building's definitely accessible. I swiftly take cover into this tent, then hear footsteps on wood. He's definitely in that building I just took a peek into. So I slowly peek out and finally see my target. I don't think he saw me. He's still in there. I'm not sure if he saw me, so I get back into cover and figure out my next play. But then there's no time to think because I hear someone running up behind me. Oh no, there's another one. It's a scav. Player scav. We'll let him walk by. Dropped him. It looked like we killed the winner of the fight because he was looting. Meaning the building should be clear. Oh, the boss was here. Yeah, I killed... I killed the scab. The scab killed the PMC and then <laughs> I killed the scab. I cleaned up the loot, then extracted a winner to return and wrap up our last couple of kills for this quest. While I was searching for the target, the Tarkov gods gave me a free one. I think that was a PMC. Looks like he was busy killing someone though. I wasn't sure what exactly he was shooting at, so to be safe, I flanked around behind his position to clear it out before I tried to loot him. There's a player scav. Oh my god. <sighs> hey, we finished our quest though. That was the last one. GG. And that marked our 30th kill, completing our quest giving us the green light to finally head into ground zero to get five sniper headshots in day number three. With ground zero being the newest map added to Tarkov as of the recording of this video, I barely know it. I've ran less than about 50 raids here in total, so there was a lot of learning to do. And true enough, in our first raid, it barely lasted five minutes. Oh no. What is going on? Are those scabs? 
Why are these so insane? Oh, what the hell? I don't know what's going on here. Are these guys cheating? Are these guys... Just they can't stay here. Oh no, these are stabs. Why are they so good? Why are they on like... Why are they so crazy? What? Only to find out that this was Ground Zero's scav boss. I had no idea it had a boss. Well, until now. Okay, noted. Boss spawns anywhere pretty much in this map. Okay, so this is, I believe, the... The hard part about sniping out here is that half the time spent in these raids is guessing what a good sniper angle is. But also, it's the fun part. I wonder if um, getting up there is useful. Let's go check it out. Seems to be a second floor. Okay, stairs here. This might be good, but also feels very exposed. I think it's worth a shot though. It's a good view, but also a good view of me. I feel like I could easily stand out up in here. My only kind of takeaway from this is that maybe not everyone's going to look up in here. To add to the layer of sniping difficulty for this, unlike in our first two days, the next five kills must be headshots using a bolt action sniper on a PMC. Scavs don't count. But luckily, while scanning my horizon, I see something in the corner of my eye. The scav. Oh, it's a PMC. PMC. I don't get spotted by someone in this big window. Did he see me? That's first shooter born in ground zero. With my first sniper headshot on the board for ground zero, we have four more to go. Across the street, into the building he's in, loot him clean, and extract safely. In this next one, I actually didn't find a single PMC, but I discovered two things that changed the course of my journey here in ground zero. The first is this cheeky sniper angle that you'll see me use a couple times. Oh, it's Tarbank. Okay. And second, this basement area that connects practically all buildings together, allowing me to traverse the map unseen. With this newfound knowledge, I extracted out of the map and returned, hoping to apply what I've learned. So straight after spawning to the map, I beelined for that sniper angle I recently discovered, because it overlooks a building that has high foot traffic. After holding this angle for a couple minutes, I saw nothing, so I decided to continue exploring a bit more of the map, where I found another gem. Connected to this building is a restaurant next door that has another amazing angle on the building across. And while I played around with this angle, immediately I saw something. Oh shoot, did I see something? Yep, I did see something. And that is our second sniper headshot of five. Shortly after though, I got snuck up on from behind. I spawned back in, this time in the basement area, and using what I learned today, safely made my way straight back to our favorite sniper angle. It's at this moment where the luckiest moment of my Tarkov life happened. Because as I held onto this angle, I heard shots a little further down where I felt I might get a better angle from the restaurant next door. So I moved over, but didn't really see anything, so I decided to go back to my original sniper angle. But then, literal minutes after leaving the spot, I come back and someone else is on it. So the shooter born dolls up close. If I stayed in this spot just a little longer, this guy would have crept up on me and killed me. But by the luck of the Tarkov gods, we got our third sniper headshot. Without hesitation, I went for extract to reset for another attempt at some snipes. But unfortunately, 
within two minutes of spawning in, I get clapped. This is simply a case of learning where people spawn the hard way. It is what it is. GG. With two more sniper headshots to go, we are nearing the finish line. I spawned in this building I'm not super familiar with, but again, using what I learned today, found my way into the basement and got back into our beloved sniper's nest. And minutes after setting up, I hear someone nearby. Sounds like a player. I need to chill. I can't hit a... I was about to say I can't hit a moving target, but I just did. One more. I lost the other dude. That dude was holding a DVL. I think he knows where I am. There he is. He's a sniper as well. I hear him. I think he's on my side of the... He might be in the restaurant. He might be here. My best guess for this guy is he's in... He's on this side. I'm also going to guess he's going to be watching his friend's body. Should have worn done. Wait, what was he doing there? I was wrong about all my guesses until I perched up here and finished Shooter Born. GG. And with that, we wrap up our 70 hour journey as an urban sniper. If you want to catch another urban sniper adventure, check out this video right here. Thank you to our patrons, Yang, Fluffy Hamster, Blossom, Smotty, Lightning Deathbringer, Tim, Bitador, and Alex.